Thank you for watching this video. My name is Johan Onkamp and in this presentation I will talk about the clock of Giza but I will give an update. If you go to my website pateo.nl there you can find the video presentation of the clock of Giza. It's in two parts on YouTube and the conclusions that I draw in that video are not completely correct. I say that the total of 20, nearly 26,000 years can be divided into four periods iron, gold, silver and bronze like this but this is not true, this is wrong this is the correct way to see at it there's an iron age, iron period then we enter the bronze, then we enter the silver then to the golden age, until here then back to silver, then back to bronze finally iron. And at this moment we are here. We're at the, we just passed the line from iron to the bronze age and that's what I'm going to explain in this video. So the correct clock of Giza looks like this. This is the Giza plateau. Here are the three pyramids. This is the Great Pyramid. This is another Great Pyramid. This is the smaller Great Pyramid. And then there are even a lot of other pyramids as well. In total, 11, including the small ones. When we look at this period of the clock from here, the Sphinx, the Great Sphinx, until the northeast corner of the Great Pyramid, that is exactly the time of the Iron Age. And this is the period we have been into for a long time, nearly four and a half thousand years. And this is 2012. This was last year. And now we are here. We have now entered the Bronze Age. So this is the correct rhythm to show the four ages. Gold, silver, bronze and iron. 2012 is here. This was the deepest part, the darkest part, we can say. And we've been here in for nearly four and a half thousand years. We've now crossed this line, that means that we've lifted up our consciousness from iron to bronze. But it will take a long time before we reach gold again. The last time we had a golden age here, ended here. About 9000 before our common era. And here you see the, trans for the transformation from Pisces into Aquarius. The pyramids in Giza, they were built, according to my research, about 11,000 years before our common era. And 26,000 years before that, so let's say about 39,000 years ago, the Great Sphinx was built. This was the last period of Atlantis and that was the period of Atlantis even before that. And the Golden Age before that, that was Lemuria. That is at least according to my research. Now let us look at the one dollar bill before, because there are a lot of clues there that support this interpretation. Here we see the backside of the one dollar bill from the United States of America. And why is the backside? Because that's the dark side, the dark side of the force as we see in the film Star Wars. And why has the number one bill been chosen? Because they want to be the number one. One dollar means number one. They want to be the one, the one and only. That's why they want to be at the top of the pyramid. That's what I'm going to show in this presentation. Here we see the great seal of the United States. Here it is apart. Here's the pyramid, here's the eagle. But when we put them together, they are the great seal of the United States. And those words are under it. Here, if you see the great seal here you see of the United States. This is in color, this is more clear. We see Latin words on it, we see Roman numerals, we see one eye on top of it. Here we see the eagle, also in color now, holding leaves, arrows, stars and what? Latin words in a ribbon. What do these Latin words actually mean? Anarchoeptus means 
undertakings agreed. The Novus Ordo Seclora means new order of the ages. Some people interpret it as new world order, which is correct. It's a new ordering on this planet. On the river we find a pluribus unum, meaning out of many, one. I will now show that the pyramid actually represents a calendar, meaning a Maya calendar. Here we see the Roman numerals. We see them again. So what is actually the date we find? When we add up all those numerals from Roman, we get 1776. And that's a very important date, or a year, as you say. It's remarkable because 1776 is 888 plus 888. And if we put it like this on the seal of Solomon, then we see that those eights are exactly fitting around. And an eight also is kind of lemon escape, but then put right up. So, is this a coincidence? I don't think so. There's more to this. Because when we put the three numbers that are next to each other on triangles, and the first one is on top, and the other two are on the bottom, and we add up the ones at the bottom, then we get 500 plus 100 plus 50 plus 10 plus 5 plus 1 is 666. Is this a coincidence? I don't think so. When we count the layers of the pyramid, we get exactly 13 layers. 13 is a very important number in the Mayan calendar. So what does it mean? It's a date because we saw 7076 at the bottom. That's where the bottom layer ends. And when we continue going up, then we end up at 2012 of our common era. And each period lasts nearly 20 years because it is 20, um, where it says 22. Yeah, 20, uh, 22, that's a cartoon. So these, these are 20 cartoons, 13 cartoons in total. And that's exactly what, what uh, is uh, standing here. So this is this is basic, basic Mayan calendar calculation. But there are more thirteens. When we count, for instance, the leaves on this branch, we get thirteen. And we see thirteen olives. We see thirteen stripes, just like in the flag of the United States. Seven white ones and six red ones in between. When we count the arrows, we get 13. When we count the stars above the head of the eagle, we get 13. And those stars are represented, represented as one star. Because here again we see the seal of Solomon, so called the Star of David. But it's in fact the seal, but it's also kind of a star. Let's count the letters. And we count this, when we count these letters, we get 13. A pluribus unum is also 13 letters. Coincidence? I don't think so. Let's use Pythagorean numerology. That's when we converse each letter into a cipher, according to this table. And when we coapt this, when we do that, we get 58. When we add up the 5 and the 8, we get 13. That's remarkable. In God we trust, and we do that same, we get also 58, 13 again. The great seal adding up gives 49, 4 plus 9 is 13. Of the United States ends up 67, 6 plus 7 is 13. This cannot be a coincidence. The Mayan tomb calendar has 9 levels. Here we see those tomb calendars. What we just saw before was this. 13 cartoons, giving in total 13 times nearly 20 years. So this calendar has nine levels in total. Yeah, the long count calendar, which has been talked about, is this calendar. But there is more to the story. These new Roman numerals, there are exactly nine. So why is that nine? 
when we count the tail feathers, we get again nine. So they reference to the pyramid, the pyramid of the Mayan calendar. Because in real, the, the, the Mayan calendar pyramid has 13 faces and nine levels. But here we see the pyramid reversed. Now it has nine faces and 13 levels. So it's been turned upside down, so to say. Let's count the wing feathers. The right wing of the eagle has 33 leaves, ah, 33 feathers. And the left one has 32. Why not 33 also? There must be a reason for this. 33, 32, what does it mean? When we count the vertices of the spinal column, we get in total 33 vertebrae. That's remarkable. And when we look at H2O, water, above 33 degrees Fahrenheit, it becomes liquid, and under it is solid, it's ice. Remarkable. When we look at the organization of the Freemasonry, and we see that there are 33 levels of yeah, secrecy, so to say. And the highest level is, of course, 33. On the front side of the $1 bill, we find an image of George Washington. He was a 33 degree Mason. When we put the Seal of Solomon on top of the pyramid, and we find five letters, because the, this point is not pointing to any letter, but the other points are pointing to letters. When we put those letters in this order, we get Mason. Coincidence? I don't think so. Perhaps these 33, 32 ciphers are a reference to Sumerian numerals. And that's what we also find in Stonehenge. This is what we see now. But when it was still functioning, it was an observatory for the planets, and for the sun and the star, all the visible lights in the sky. This is, for instance, the moment of June 21, the summer solstices, and the sunlight at the rise of the sun goes exactly between the hillstones all the way to the outer stone. But when we look at the hillstone, then we find also the same ciphers, because this is now in Sumerian. Sumerian writing, Sumerian ciphers, numerals. 3332. Here we see the Sumerian numerals. So, what does it actually mean, 3332? We need to understand the way the Sumerians were counting. It's not like we do 10, 100, 1000, and so on. So, every time times 10, they do it 10, and times 6, and times 6, uh, 10, 6, time, and so on. So this is units, then tens, then six times tens, which is 60, then 10 times 60, 600, and so on. Yeah, I'm not explaining it in detail, but this is the way the Sumerians were counting, and that's why we have 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, or 360 degrees in a full circle, and so on. It's all coming from Sumeria, a long time ago. So 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 10 is 30, 3 times 60 is 180, and 3 times 600 is 1800. Adding up these four numbers, we get 2012. The hidden meaning of the eagle's feathers, the right wing and the left wing, in total, is a reference to 2012, just as the nine levels of the pyramid now, there are 13 levels of the pyramid. So what does this all mean? It means that in 2012, we crossed the line between the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. We are now, 2013, in the age of Aquarius. The theme of the age of Pisces was we believe, and we believed a lot of stuff the churches were telling us, the universities were telling us, the, the governments were telling us, the healthcare was telling us, the media was telling us, we believed all that. It was nonsense, it was not true. Now we know that we should trust our own understanding. We want to know. 
Because this was a water sign. It has to do with feeling. When you feel, you can maybe be, be misguided. But when you start to think for yourself, then you will trust on what you know, what you actually can prove for yourself. So this is the age of thinking. And the theme now is we fraternize. We connect to each other because together we stand strong. In 2012, a new order of the age, age is commenced. The consciousness of humanity will now ascend from solid to fixed, from solid and fixed to liquid and flexible, from deadly frozen to reviving, from living self-centered to living in harmony with all other life forms. Out of many, we indeed become as one living organism. Thank you very much for watching this video.